should be in person oh yeah it should be in person i know i agree i would I, definitely i already per- don't like it yeah, well i mean you're you were too busy over there and i'm also too busy over here uh so that's that is what it is you're probably arguably more busy than see i am see you, Kiska. over there later rob uh, I, I gauge how busy I am by Matt Bernardin's texts. The one I got today, he's 58, number 58 in line on my text right now. You have keys? Yes. Okay. Thanks, bud. See ya. Yeah. Uh, Rob's heading out for the day. So he says, uh, I guess Garrett doesn't remember me. The one before that was October 29th, which I'm almost through my text to get to the one on October 29th. And it says, I wonder if Garrett still remembers me. It's funny because <laughs> right before I switch, because like I said, I'm using my my phone to record, um, which I hope I put it on. I'm pretty sure I put it on airplane mode just now. Yeah, I did. Right, right before I hit airplane mode, he called me because he was he was texting me to see if uh, if Hillary was replacing him on the whiskey wimps for the next couple episodes. Mm. Um, and I was I just told him it depended on how his attitude was, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> we love Matt, but I can, I, how, how many texts about the, does Garrett still know I exist deep? I'm two Matt texts deep. So that's how behind I am, which as you know, is about two, three weeks, every, every two, three weeks, you know, it's like, Hey, do you remember me? Where are you? Are we still friends? Well, I, I talk to Matt a bit more often than you do. I think. I never talk to Matt. <laughs> he just texts me those texts and I ignore him. And then. <laughs> And then he super chats on my live streams and says, hey, check your texts. Oh, that's so. how I got to get him to super chat on my live streams. Thanks for the tip. You're welcome. Excellent yeah. tip. I Excellent. just told him to come out. I was like, don't wait for me to text you back that I remember you and try to start a text conversation with me. Just show up at my house. Yeah. Don't do that. Ashley won't like that. So show up <laughs> at a new facility. I have a whole place for myself now and my shenanigans. How's that all going? I See, this is why I imagine that you're just too busy for this is why we can't do it in person because you're exponentially busy and this, there's all kinds of things i want to talk to you about that go into this and and how we interact and, and all that and how it's affecting all that like you what what's your what's your sleep schedule like how, how often are you <laughs> <laughs> got so many questions related to how you're managing your time because uh... i don't know that i ever want to like go that hard you know what i mean like it's too hard it's been too hard for too long too hard uh i'll i'll say this i i used to take like sleeping pills for insomnia and stuff when i was a kid and i I don't like doing that kind of stuff um but i had a hard time especially after i got back from indonesia i had a lot of like i think ptsd and stuff so i would do that and i got off it and now i'm doing those again just to make sure that i can actually fall asleep because the problem is you push 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 you're exhausted I'm dealing with a lot of Lyme symptoms again right now, mm. which I, I really think starts to correlate with the whole, like if I'm stressed or I'm tired, it creeps up, you know what I mean? It starts expressing itself. So a lot of brain fog and stuff, but anyway, then you need sleep and your body's like, no, I can't sleep. My mind's going hundred miles an hour. I can't mm. stop. So I'm to the point where I'm taking um, melatonin. So it's like a more homeopathic, you know, thing to, chill out and fall asleep but no i yeah it's it's been too hard for too long but i'll tell you there's a couple of big things that were haunting me it's not so much like how much stuff i have to do it's the things i know that i have to do that aren't done yet that crushes me mentally does that make sense like yeah. i i could be working construction and have a way more physically demanding job but you can think about whatever stupid thing you want to when you're doing those kind of jobs. You know what I mean? And yes. that, I mean, at least me, I don't know every construction, you know, position, but when I work construction summers as a kid, I could think about peanut butter sandwiches if I wanted to, it didn't matter. Now it's like so mentally demanding. And so when you have these big things and this facility looming over me, it was a six month escrow. And so much work. Well, you saw it when we were in uh, Phoenix the one time. I stayed up late doing bank papers and stuff. I did that 30 times at least, like 30 all-nighters in the course of that six months getting paperwork. So the fact that the building is done was one. Number two, we're all here. Last Sunday, we all moved in. 
flat. All the snakes, there's not a, a trace of reach out reptiles left at the other place. Everything is out. Um, so that's huge. I'm sure Ashley loves that. Oh, she's so happy. Yeah. If you if you've been watching our new vlog channel, you see I like the part where Thomas is like, Are you excited? I'm like, I don't know. Why does everyone keep asking me that? And then he asked Ashley, Are you excited? And like the music starts and she's like, Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was watching that actually. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, but uh, so that was the big one. And then Tinley is always a big deal for us. I mean, we kind of show up and all that stuff. It's a lot of work, a lot of coordination. And so um, now that Tinley's over, the bank paperwork is over and the move is over. I feel really good. It, and so now I go back to just being busy. I don't have anything looming over me. You know what I mean? There's plenty of stuff to do. My to-do list is a mile long. I got 60 texts after texting people furiously all day long. Um, but, you know, it's it's so crazy, man. Like, I I don't know. I don't know anyone else that is in this situation. This Maybe this will sound like really braggy or something, but Today, I sat down to answer messages on text, and I have so many inquiries in my texts that throughout the course of the day, answering those texts, I made as much money as we made the last time we went to Tinley, and that was a very good show for us. Just answering my text messages today. So the crazy thing about that is it's... Um, it, the money is like sitting there waiting to be made and there's not enough garrets to go around. I guess that's the way to put it. Right. So I don't know. It's nuts. That's a but. kind of a perfect tie into the thing that I had been thinking about actually for the past couple of weeks, I've, or maybe even a few weeks, I've been thinking about having a contribution for diving deep in the shallow end, which. Oh, really? I, You're going to yeah. take it this time? Yeah. Cause I never have. Okay, I'm just it, looking up my notes, but go for it. It ties in with the last one, and it ties in with uh, what you're just talking about. It's it's simple question. It's a two part question. It's what would you absolutely, without hesitation, do for money? And uh, second part of the question is what would you absolutely never, upon any circumstances, do for money? That's not that shallow. <laughs> 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 just so you know that's yeah, not like what kind of tree is the sexy kind of tree or the well, questions maybe, i usually have around here well maybe it's like uh well, how do you just stay, try to stay shallow in the deep end uh, good luck <laughs> yeah right well let me think about that for a second but are you you did your uh you know your sober october for the most part for, for the all part i, I was 100 percent. i didn't even drink on like Halloween at midnight or anything like that. Well, the only reason I saw it, I saw a video of yours, which is kind of funny how we can keep up with each other this way, but I didn't watch the video uh, that said like ruining sober October or something like that or failing at sober October. Mm, I, I was throwing it out there for me, myself to potentially fail. I brought one of my favorite whiskeys, William LaRue Weller, poured myself a glass. just kind of like we did the last podcast. I had a glass of whiskey mm -hmm. the whole time, didn't drink it. And I did the same thing on live stream. But at this point, it was getting a lot closer. It was like, four or five days away from the end of sober October. And so like, your brain is thinking, my brain's like, oh, it's almost good like does it really matter if I go all the way Who's to the end counting? of October? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. such an addictive brain thought process. Yeah, exactly. So I did, I did make it all the way to the, to the end of sober October. Good. It. And uh, yeah, now I'm not speaking of that. What you got over there? Some Woodford Reserve double oaked. Oh, you got your headphones out. You, I I'm back, I'm back. Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. It looks like that's what you grabbed. I got the Double Oaked, yeah. This is yeah. a place down the street, and I knew we were doing this, so I said, ooh, the Double Oaked. Oh, that, like that's a good one. Double Oaked. Yeah, Double Oaked, it's a, that's a pretty good whiskey right there. I, I like it, actually. Um, and I, I've also got uh, some – what I brought is, since I didn't get to drink any last week or last month, uh, from James Green, he gave me this barrel or this bottle, so I figured I'd throw it on here. As another, sorry for not drinking with him at Oh, yeah, 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 right. But I haven't tapped into it yet. It's this uh, Yahama Bay, or Yahara Bay distillers out of Wisconsin. And it's a store pick of theirs, some straight bourbon whiskey, 34 months. Uh, she has some interesting tasting notes. It says light oak and vanilla aromas come through on the palate, which is very similar to what you should be getting on that Woodford over there uh, with caramel, honey. And this is the one that throws me is it, and biscuit. I'm really looking forward to the biscuit. 
<laughs> Some of these notes, Dave. Hey, cheers. <laughs> hey, cheers. Yeah, I love I love uh, biscuits. Yeah, we didn't get into the uh, the stuff over there. So what yeah, I absolutely do for money. While you're while you're, I'll catch you up on my busyness over here. It's been a different type of busy. And something I've been thinking about too, like thinking about what you're doing and what you've been going through it to make all your stuff work over there, which is great. And I'm super proud of you, by the way. Um, I mean, I think it's a hell of a feat to undertake. And I can only imagine, like you said, all the things going through your brain constantly of all the things that you have kind of backed up there in the brain space. But, and I was thinking about it just now in the bathroom, right by my shower, which is where you've just shared a lot of your ideas with me. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> was, uh, was if I had ever wanted to, I was thinking about the things I've done in my things that I really enjoy, which obviously you love breeding snakes. You love working with reptiles and you've made mm -hmm. it into this career and job. And I've been all on the border of thinking of like, do I, cause I've always said, I want to max out of like 30 clutches a year period. And like, keep it basically at hobby level. I've been like debating for years going back and forth. Like, do I hire somebody? I've got another friend. Uh, I had another kid that was helping take care of the snakes. When I was gone out of town, super cool guy who I definitely would have hired if I was to start this on the next level. And I've got another kid like that named Noah, who I've met recently, who is coming over this evening, actually to help me. I got a boy scout troop meeting that I'm bringing snakes to. He's going to come over and help me, you know, pack up snakes and go handle the snakes at the troop meeting and he's the next person he's on my list he's like if i decide to go business like go start taking it to the next level he's somebody that i would want to hire as an employee but am i willing to do that because in the past things that i've done before with like photography or playing music turning that into a job and then it becoming a job where it's something that i've dearly loved with all of my heart becomes work and I start to think of it as work and how that ruins the fun a little bit. And the I, get, love. I get what you're saying. I, I don't think that works for me with the reptiles. Um, I think I'm, I've always been so obsessed with them that I, I put a lot of work on myself pressure. You know what I mean? Even when it was a hobby. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, okay, I'm going to breed this species that's never been bred before, or I'm going to tame this animal that absolutely wants to eat me. You know what I mean? Like scars and this and that and sleepless nights and stuff just from the hobby level. So making that into the job is not that hard. Sure. No, I can um, see for you, it's definitely, well, I'm, I, I can also see that you're incredibly busy, but now I'm glad that you're like seeing the kind of like being able to look in the rearview mirror, right? At the, it sounds like maybe even today, like at this moment, you're able to just like, you know, like oh, man, I got all this crazy hard stuff sort of behind you and maybe it'll start. There's, sorry, go ahead. There's what? Oh, I, I was just going to say that as far as like getting it behind me, there's been a multi, multi part plan that's come together. So this isn't an accident. And one, uh, I, sometimes I think if, if someone's been into reptiles one year, two years, whatever, and they kind of found our channel and have only known us as this or something, they might think that we've been doing this as reach out reptiles for as long as time can be because their time started two years ago or whatever. But we, I quit my job to do reptiles full time four years ago. That's all. And so anything that we've accomplished has been, you know, I had snakes. I had a lot of uh, contacts and breeding experience and stuff before that. But as far as going from like a hobby to a full-time job, that was only four years ago. So everything that we've got from getting into this building or reading all the different cool stuff we bred and stuff like that, that's been just four years. So that to me is the mind blowing when it's kind of like, wow, we, I accomplished a lot. <laughs> it is not so much like what I've accomplished in total. It's the fact that that happened in four years. It's like, geez, I've probably been too busy. And, you know, I, I mean, I started right when my last kid was being born. So I've been this busy for Finley's entire life. And he's by far the most insane of my children. And <laughs> so direct correlation there or what? Nature versus but, nurture. we got to figure that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, no, uh, so the, the multi-part plan, the building was a huge part. Get them out of the house. And it didn't have to be this building. This was shooting for the stars and it worked but you know it had to be something and then the last piece is a sales guy because like i said i i just jumped on my text messages today and, and i basically sold the same amount we did at tinley because i got those 60 text messages that a lot of them are like high level inquiries and stuff you know what i mean that where they're contacting me directly people that you know 
call me straight to my cell phone or whatever. So um, the sales guy is the last piece of the puzzle where, you know, every, every time that comes one more thing happens, I can sit back a little bit more, but there's also this aspect more relating to where you're at of when you delegate something, you, you have ownership, you care very much about it. And even if you had somebody with all of your abilities, let's say you could clone yourself, except that that person has no ownership of what you're doing. They're just their own person with their own life and stuff. And you bring them on and they're every bit as good as you. I think you're going to get about half as much mileage out of them as you get out of yourself because of that care and passion. So if you can hire someone, if you hire someone that's, let's say this person is half as efficient as you at doing whatever job it is, right? You expect, okay, they're going to take twice as long. I don't pay them as much, but I can clean this room in a day. They're going to take two days, right? Um, but it's not like that. It's more like eh, maybe three days because <laughs> they also don't care as much or maybe they'll clean the room, but this animal didn't get that little extra TLC or, or whatever. And so I'm blessed with like a great staff. So like Rob takes care of my animals. He cares very much about the animals, which is great. He actually really cares about the animals, but you almost have to find someone that cares more than you do, you know? Yeah. So like we, we produced the six localities last year out of the seven that we're trying to do. And I'm like, cool. I did that. You know what I mean? But Rob, you know, he goes on and on and on to talk about the Karampas I've produced, the Madus I've produced, and takes total ownership of that. He cares much more that he gets an extra clutch of Madus this year than Garrett did the year before, or what you know, or whatever. So he takes a lot of pride in that. The hard part, though, when you start bringing on expenses, you can grow. You know, your company, your bottom line. Like if you look at the amount of money that comes in every year from reptiles with me this year versus four years ago, it's significantly larger. And that's because of my staff, you know, however, um, there's like this plateau thing. So like where you're at is basically kind of probably close to maximum level of what you can operate on your own. For me, that was two years ago, you know, um, at least what you're willing to give, you know what I'm saying? So the money thing, maybe I gave more than you did in that regard because I was just doing so much work ever since we started this podcast, really. Um, but uh, with the reptiles, video stuff, you got me far surpassed there. But as far as work with the reptiles. So the thing is, once I started bringing someone on, like when you're operating at that max capacity, you, you have complete efficiency. And all the money that goes back, you have complete control over that and where it goes and how you spend it. And there's a lot of freedom there. As soon as you bring somebody else on, you can make a, a little bit more money, but you now have like stuff start. It's kind of like the saying, like the stuff you own owns you. Yes. That's and where I'm not. That's, that's the first That's what's holding step. me back from doing anything like that. Is like That's the first step to stuff starting to own you is that first employee. Yeah. And I don't it's know great, if I could do it's it. great to have an employee. Sure. But, you know, it's like I did as many things on, you know, say Rob's to-do list today as I did on my own to-do list because his stuff is like owning me because that's something that he has to do, but takes two people or whatever the case may be. So, yeah. Does that make sense? It does. And, it, and, and there's I'm glad like that plateaus. I have you to watch do it. So that I, <laughs> <laughs> there's like steps. Like you, you push, like you'll get that employee and you're like, ah, this is crazy. And it like totally owns me. And then when you, as you figure that out and you get more efficient at it, it gets better. But it, that's the point where you're like, maybe I should hire another employee or oh. buy a snake room or good. Not honey good. and biscuits, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> is that what it tastes like? Oh that's yeah. Cool. Honey and biscuits. hundred uh, percent. I think of you That's perfect. What you said, what you're doing. And I, I get to watch it. So I grew up across from these guys that I got to watch do all kinds of crazy stuff and got to learn all these things that I was like, wow, that was uh, really like so much better to watch you do that and get to like almost experience it. But you're talking about stupid guys doing stupid stuff <laughs> yeah, and comparing yeah, yeah. that to me. Okay. That, I got that's, I'm that's following. Just I'm making doing. sure. Yes. That's it. 
<laughs> and uh you know you're obviously different in a way you're you're doing things through so you're uh -huh. building a company you know you're you're it's good stuff that you're doing you know relative to what they were doing absolutely but i still somehow see it in the same way we're like I, man garrett is destroying himself right now to make this thing work uh mentally emotionally yeah. maybe not spiritually i don't know you haven't talked too much about that but i i'm assuming draining on all, it's, all it's ends drain, yeah drains all the way across yeah well, so i which is why think, that's why I thought that it, just everything we were talking about so far just ties in with my, my idea was for, you know, di getting shallow in the deep end or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the difference between you and me is our, our different capacity for self-love. I'm a fairly self-loathing guy. So punishing myself comes very naturally to me and it's not high on my priority list to treat myself. Well, it's actually quite low. This goes back to the the one we talked about in the last episode, like cutting off a piece of yourself for money. Right. Right. And right. I'm like, oh yeah, for fifty thousand dollars, you can have my head or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like, I wouldn't give you a pinky toe for a million dollars or whatever. You know. But well, uh, I'll give you I'll give you mine. They're very simple. I don't really need okay. to. This is this is literally for me at least. It's definitely turned into getting staying shallow in the deep end. Uh, okay because my, my answers to both questions are very, very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that I, as far as what I would not do for money, it's simple. It's, it's, if you have to pick one thing, um, I would not hurt somebody else, either physically or emotionally. I, I'll hurt somebody emotionally for free if I think they're going to benefit from it. <laughs> but if somebody paid me, hey, if you go, like, go, go ruin this guy's day, I'll, I'll give you this much money. Like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it for money. Like if somebody paid me to hurt again, either physically or emotionally, if somebody's mm -hmm. offering me, like, I'll pay you to do this. How about professionally? Because that's what happens. People come in and they're like, you know what? That guy's successful. So I got a dog on him if I want to seem relevant. Because that happens every day where you can see a simple, like a lot of the drama online that, that people talk about curses the reptile industry is one guy talking smack about his competitors, hoping he looks better. It's kind of mm. like the high school bully thing. Like I'm not relevant, but as long as I point out all your flaws, you might not see mine. I've been one off from that as far as like Freedom Breeder and Reptiship doing doing their thing there, but that not me personally. Um, and that was one off from that. I wasn't. I never had any ideas to do that, but I was somewhat related in it, I guess. You can um, see that though. That is an exchange money for hurting somebody. Sure. Right. At least that's the idea. If I hurt this person, I'll make more money. Yeah. My, my idea was always just like something we've talked about a while back, like make your own, make your own pie. You don't need to say that somebody else's pie tastes bake, disgusting. Just make a really, more pies. Yeah. Bake yeah. more pies and bake ones that are really good. You don't need yep. to be like, Hey, that guy's pie sucks. So mm -hmm. you should eat mine. That, that's, that's never been my mentality with that either. So that ties in with the same, same answer for me is that I'm not willing to hurt somebody else for money. Um, it, when it comes to professional level. Yeah. I'd rather just make something make great pie that people love mm -hmm. and uh the other answer is it's what better I, for business that's what people don't realize all the people who do it they they're constantly fighting and they don't realize they're making bad business choices totally yeah i agree 100 percent. anyway go ahead oh the other answer um what i would do for money i've already proven this many times is i will i will consume things like I will put things in my mouth. <laughs> if you eat that gallon of mayonnaise, I'll give you 50 bucks. <laughs> like, and I still have a level there, but it's, it's small. I, I, I've proved this so many times, like way back before I ever did anything online or, or anything like that. Uh, we're sitting in my living room and my buddy, Cody, one of my great buddies, oh, I can't believe you have not met this person. He was best man at my wedding. Like we, we grew up together. Um, mm. He's sitting in the living room. I was just home visiting for a little bit. And this pincher bug goes running across the floor, a little earwig. <laughs> And I, I, I grab it, grab it off the carpet. And he goes, he goes, how much to eat it? I was like, how much you got in your wallet? He's like, he's like, <laughs> he's like, I don't know. I was like, all right, whatever's in your wallet, I'll eat it. He's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so well, he did the mealworm thing at the reptile show and drinking your pee for us arc for a thousand bucks. Okay. So you like consuming things. I'm Do very you know willing. For, very for willing. everybody out there that wants to have an interesting collaboration with Brian, put a camera in his face, give him something disgusting and pay him to eat it. And he'll do it on your channel. Is that fair? It sounds pretty fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I think my stuff is more self-deprecating. So probably along the same vein as what you're talking about. If it's, if it's 
gross for me, painful for me, challenging for me, sure. You know what I mean? Um, if it means a sacrifice for me, like I do this with, this is a problem I think every snake breeder has. You, you have a baby snake that you love and then, you know, somebody offers you money for it. Do you take it? You know, like, I love that snake. Should I give it up? And is, if it hurts me, it can hurt me, my breeding plans, this, that, and the other. But if the money is right, I'll make that. I sold two holdbacks today. You know, we're talking about the money or whatever. So um, if it's something that's, that's like that for me or, you know, hey, just do this for this long or suffer that much, then go for it. Yeah, I'm down. Physical pain is really easy to endure for me. Um, so that's a no brainer. You know what I'm saying? What would I not do for money? <sighs> kind of the stuff that I don't do anyway, just whatever it is. Like I, I, I'm fairly, um, I have like a, a, I guess an unusual moral compass that makes me not fit so well with different groups that other people might, you know, prescribe to, but, uh, but I have my moral compass. And so if you ask me to do something that's against my morals, I don't care how much money you get. Money is not really that crazy a motivating factor for me. I do a lot of things in business and I know my business has to make money, but they're things that I would have done anyway. You know what I mean? I, I you know, if it, if it impacts me morally, I'm not interested. I guess you that's, know? I guess that's a pretty vague answer, but I'm, I, I don't know how to say it. Like, so I guess if it, if it was something that would hurt somebody else that like for morally, if I'm like, well, I don't really, that doesn't bother me. But if I did that thing, like, let's say you ask me to do something that's going to hurt my wife emotionally, relationally or whatever, then that's not even, I just don't even see that as like, that's above my pay grade. You got to ask my wife, Hey, can I do this to your husband for that amount of money? If she says yes, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> does that make sense yeah yeah it sounds like we're, i, I mean i won't do a, it for any amount of money yeah this isn't a surprise to me it sounds like we're basically on the it, again Pretty much the same thing, yeah on the yeah. same page it's no so it's I, no surprise if i wasn't gonna do something i i wouldn't do it the only thing that's different between you and me are what we will and won't do you know what i mean because i'm like yeah go ahead you take my left hand i don't, I don't use that one very much it's yeah and i'm like not a chance <laughs> right i'm like go ahead cut it off that's probably worth about i don't know you know whatever you know so <laughs> Stuff that I would do anyway, yeah, I'll do it. Whatever. Stuff that I won't do, nah, I'm not going to do it. There's, there's very few times where I was like, I feel really wrong about this, but I'm going to take money for it. I can't even do it with a snake sale where someone's like, yeah, I really like that snake. The price is right, and I'll buy it now, and it's a $5,000 snake, but I, I want to make sure you tell me that this is going to stay under 10 feet, and, and we got a deal. And I know that the snake has a chance of getting over 10 feet. I just can't do it. Mm. You know, I can't do it. You know, like I, I won't do it. It doesn't. And the money is not the making that sale is not that important. Now, obviously if I have 60 unanswered, you know, text messages with people trying to give me money, then I'm not going to take money for something I didn't want to do. So does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It absolutely makes sense. So probably on the same page. Yeah. Um, I, I think it would be really cool to get feedback. You know what you guys should do if you're listening is go on our Facebook group, the searchable as reptiles group chat page and try to find the exception to the rule. Cause that's what I always like to do where I remember my teacher one time said, yeah, there's no English words that have an M and a B together. And I was like, Oh really? So then I started thinking and I was like, okay, how about like Mombasa? And they're or, like, nope, I said English word. Amble. He, right. And then I said lamb. And I just kept going. I kept finding all these words. And they're like, okay, okay, fine. And I'm like, here's 10 more. Here's 15 more. You know, so as soon as you make a rule, somebody wants to find the exception to it. So, um, yeah, if you guys are listening and you're saying, oh, Garrett says he won't do something against his morality. Or Brian says he won't do something that hurts somebody go on that group and start a thread saying, I think I have something. And you can tell us what we should do for how much money. And uh, you and I will assess, we'll do some soul searching and say yes or no. Yeah, I guess I would do that. <laughs> how about that? Yeah, that sounds, sounds great. What do you guys think? So maybe we'll get cool. a cool meal out of it. <laughs> <laughs> 
what I wouldn't do for a million dollars. <laughs> At this point, if you gave me a million dollars, I'm very confident it just wouldn't go very far. So <laughs> yeah, I can't spend a million. At what time is it? You know what I mean? It's uh, 617 where I'm at. I could spend that before everyone around here closes and I live in a small town. <laughs> right. So yeah, one, one million easy. doesn't quite go where it used to. No, it's crazy. <laughs> not not with me. I don't know that it ever used to go very far. Money with me. It's come in. Easy come, easy go is kind of a theme of my money life. Yeah. It's never been that hard to make it, but I'll spend it in a heartbeat too. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things about us that are more similar than I ever realized. Like we're there's all these differences we have, but there's so many things that seem to be very much the same. <laughs> Yeah, so what's kind of cool is like, you know, I think some people like try to surround themselves with people that are like them. We probably are are guilty of that. And those are the people that we're comfortable around or whatever. But on the surface, we're not alike at all. No. But how long did we talk before we're like, I, I dig this guy? It was like probably a minute and a half. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? I like to keep people around that I think make me a better person. And that's not always entirely dependent on who they are as a person, as long as whatever their effect on me is, is that it, I think it makes me better, whether it's that I'm there to help them and that in turn makes me a better person or if they're there to help me realize that I could be doing better myself and what attributes they have that I'm like, I, I really like this about this person. I'd like to be a little bit more like that. Um, well, a lot of people say like in order to, have a kind of a healthy cycle in your life and be experiencing growth, you must always be both learning and teaching someone at the same time. You know what I mean? I think a lot of times you're like, whoa, 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 I can't teach anyone yet. I'm doing too much learning or, you know what I'm saying? Or, hey, I've arrived. There's nothing left for me to learn. Let me teach. I'm the man. It, either place is unhealthy. You should always be having someone teaching you and then teaching other people constantly yes. at whatever level you're at to be growing and all you're doing it to be most effective is reaching out to learn something from somebody who is just slightly ahead of you in that area. None of us are dead even. And you can't even say I'm a better person than you because it depends on what your metrics are. What are you using to measure that? So no matter what it is, it could be, I'm wearing a Brown shirt. You're wearing a red shirt. You could be that much better at me at wearing red shirts. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what the topic is but if i'm learning from you and you're just ahead of me in a given area and then i'm teaching just behind me if i'm in high school i should be teaching someone in junior high what to expect right so you're saying you're thinking about hiring your first employee we have eight so you're like oh that's like just right there four years ago garrett was well really i think uh with aiden was my first uh employee besides kim that would just kind of come around and help out every now and then aiden was the first person i interviewed and hired that was um three years ago. So not that long ago was I in that position. So in that regard, that's a good me, the teacher, you, the student, but there's other areas in our lives where you can be the teacher and I can be the student based on whatever the subject is. Right. Yeah. So, so it's kind of cool because the one relationship can actually facilitate both parts. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Ding. Oh, <laughs> it was a little too. <laughs> I got you. You throw water on stuff. I'll do the ding sound. There <laughs> we go. Oh, that didn't work. I'm sorry. It only hit my notebook. The laptop has only got a couple droplets on it. It's, it's fine. <laughs> well, you may not be able to relate to this because you're way ahead of me than I am. But we started this vlog channel, which been a long time coming. And we used to always joke, like, I don't vlog. I have an educational channel. I'll go vlog on Cusco's channel, right? Um, but now we have our own. We called it The Reach, right? I, Which, I saw, yeah. Yeah. No, no. I, right, The Reach. You're yeah. not the only person I'm talking to. <laughs> I still, I, I, it never, I can never get over that, you know? I never get over I'm always like, yeah, I know, Garrett. <laughs> I know, Garrett. I'm, I'm giving context for the listeners, you stupid. <laughs> So this is the content. Ashley's here. She actually just popped in. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Hi Ashley. Can you hear? You have to come over here. Hillary was in earlier. You have to run through the camera. She, they got a puppy. Guess who else is here? 
<laughs> Perfect. There's my wife. So, as entertaining as that was, if you guys are listening only, you'll have to speed up to this point in the in the video so you can watch what Ashley just did. But <laughs> my wife is not a part of my educational videos. Very, very rarely has she made an appearance. And it would be a time where I'm like, can you help me with this dying snake, right? And she sets up the camera and then I need another set of hands and she's crying on camera or something. Um, but it's like out of, say, 400 videos, it's three of them that she's in. The vlog is different. She's, I think, been in all of them so far. And I'll tell you, it is so fun for me to go back and watch, not just my wife, I'm just using her as an example, but like my kids, my wife, all this stuff in the thing. And I haven't got to the point where someone's like, I'm gonna call child services on you yet. <laughs> but I'm sure that's like the fourth I mean, episode, right? By four episodes is probably my put leaning point. Um, but yeah, it, so far, it's only the fun stuff for me to have a vlog and be including my family with their opinions on stuff. and. And to hear them, because a lot of it, the great part is, this is it's got to be better for me than it is for you. Because Thomas does my videos. I don't do it. You do your video. So you know the content that's coming. Now, I'll usually preview the videos before they go live. Usually as in like 99.999% of the time. But even just watching a rough cut where he interviewed Ashley and I wasn't there. And she's spilling the beans. Like the best one was the unboxing the African house snakes we we're talking about we did that on a vlog and we're talking about, she's like, why did you buy this many house snakes? This is crazy. And she starts giving her opinion of it. And it's so funny to me because she's the way he did the editing. She's giving her opinion in an interview of what she was thinking. And then he cuts back to like her face looking in the box as I'm unboxing them. And she was standing right next to me, but I was looking in the box and you could see her face like thinking what she was saying in the interview. And I'm like, this is so funny. It's this whole dimension to this experience that I was just like, cool, more snakes. Check these out. Oh, babies. This one's pretty. And already, and then over here, 16 minutes, the 16 inches to my left is my wife going, Oh my God, what are we done? Why don't I, why don't I have a house? If he's buying this many house snakes, you should buy houses first and then the snakes or whatever, you know, like, <laughs> It's just so funny, you know, like we have a house, but she's like, I want my kids to read down or whatever. So it, oh man, it's, it's amazing. It's like, for me, it's like watching the office, but I'm the character in the office. You know what I'm saying? Where they do their little like confessional style. And, oh, I love that, that yeah. vlog. I, so I get So funny. It. I could see it being even, even better what, having somebody else like present to you what it is they did with the footage. Absolutely. Right. I, it almost right for a second there. You made me feel like I do want somebody else to make my videos for me just for a oh, second. It's so cool. It's so cool. Cause you're like, they did what? Or even things that you like didn't really catch first person. If you're editing the video, you've seen it 16 times before you have the final product. But what Thomas is giving me is a final product or a close to a final product. Right. Um, it, as he sees what happened. Right. So it's like the world through my world. It's my world through did, his did, eyes. Did Thomas, did Thomas move out there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, I assumed he would if, if we, we, we brought him over. I was supposed to get this new facility like beginning of summer. And I told him, Hey, come out and move so you can film like us moving into it. And that'll be the start of our vlog. So we, you know, planning all this stuff ahead. I wanted to jump in at the new facility. Problem was the facility thing didn't happen till like, four months after I moved him out, but hey, whatever, you know, yeah. he's been dinkering around with things, making our channels look better in the meantime. So sure. Yeah. But yeah, he moved out. He's full-time salary staff now, even when he moved, he's like, oh, I'm going to do part-time and other stuff on the side. And I absorbed him. You're making me think, Carl. <laughs> You're making me. Oh, it's think. so good. And I mean, like the quality of his stuff is good. You know, it's just like anything else. If you're cleaning the cages, like I said, that one snake's not going to get the TLC that you know it needs or whatever. But if somebody else cares about it, they're also going to be picking up stuff that you would have missed. Because let's be fair, like Rob keeps snakes. He breeds snakes. He's as good as, as I am. You know what I'm saying? Thomas, yeah. for me, is clearly better than the, at the video making side, even though I help him conceptually with most of it, right? Um, but he can execute very well. 
So your video quality might go down a smidge if you let someone else do that. But oh my gosh, your experiential quality of those videos, you will be smiling ear to ear like it was your first vlog. You know what I mean? Your first thumbs up, your first whatever. Not that you care about thumbs up or whatever, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so fun to watch, especially on the vlog side, because you've been saying it for years, but I'm just starting to see this in the first person. You're like, no, I vlog because I want to have records of my kids, my wife, all the stuff, blah, blah, blah. Right. And we all watch the vlog because we want to watch Brian's life, Brian's story, you know. Um, but when you have someone else do it, you can, you were there initially, but then you can also partake in the whole, I want to watch Brian's life thing. And that's something I don't think you get editing your own videos. Even if you were to film them and have someone else edit them. Uh oh, puppy. Puppy is back. back. Hi, Eli. <laughs> What's going Garrett, on, bud? Garrett says hi. I know they can't. They can't hear us. I like your others. shirt. I like your shirt. He loves Ooh. your great white shirt. Yeah. Your great white shark shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm thinking that I might be willing to watch video quality go down a little bit. I, it would have to be the right person. That means that person's gonna. You know, it's it's. I'm gonna have to make sure I can pay him well. Um, I do have a pretty interesting season come up it's potential that i could pay somebody's salary with one snake i'm producing this season so see there you go and again you can take the video just make them edit it so that you don't you can still have the ownership of what goes in and then give them the content so that you were there as it happened but you have no clue the final result until they're showing you a rough draft a rough right. edit then right. you're like ah because they're the ones reviewing the footage over and over and over and over and over again so right. start there. Just get an, just someone to edit. They could do it remotely. They could live in Pakistan and edit for you. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Like I said, I'm going going tonight. Um, another fun part about the reptile, going back to what you're saying about teaching and and how it's how you're learning at the same time. Uh, this thing I'm doing tonight, right? Right after, after as soon as we finish this, I'm doing my live stream that I usually do on Tuesdays, and then we're actually having summer on uh, Grace Mitchell on a Zoom call um with the patreon crew to do a little q a with her for a half hour and then right after that i'm <laughs> packing up and going to the boy scout meeting and the person the scout leader like uh, the troop leader that uh that sent me the mm -hmm. information i guess he's having their his uh scouts earn their snake and rept or the reptile and amphibian badge is what they're they're earning okay cool tonight. yeah so super yeah. cool and i went to go look through his note he had this little pdf they sent over like this little you know list of what he set out for them as far as homework to learn stuff and and so i'm picking through his information i'm looking through looking for like all right where am i gonna have to correct this guy you know thinks he knows things about reptiles and amphibians i scrolling down through his info and I'm like no that's that's good yeah that's good and I, he starts talking about you know reptiles are produced from uh or, you know, snakes re reproduce for, with eggs. And then I'm like, oh, oh, here's where I'm going to get them. And then he's like, and then nope, right underneath it. Lamb, for lamb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but then he goes right there. He's like, no, then there's viviparous. You know, I was like, oh, oh my God, this guy like covered it so well. Like I'm, I almost feel like I'm going to teach this thing. This guy might, might learn me a thing or two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which is, is going to be great. But the other thing that the way that ties in, like I said, that Noah, the person who I've most recently thought about, if I really want, if I wanted to hire somebody for Triple B, if I wanted to have an employee at Triple B, it would be this kid. And he's coming tonight. He's going to come film like the Boy Scout thing and help me bring snakes over just because he wanted to, just for fun. Um, that, that is the place to start. If you can, if you can lock down your volunteers, because they're the ones that are passionate enough to do it for free. Like, so we're, we've been talking a lot about Rob the guy who does the snake breeding and everything. What happened with him is he was a CNC machinist, but he kept retics. And then during the whole COVID thing, he got laid off. So he said, Hey, I'm in between jobs. He knew that I'm endlessly busy. He goes, how about for the next couple of weeks, I come over and help you out. And it took those two weeks for me to convince him not to go find another job and come work for me instead. Ta-da. You know, so that was it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and I, like Thomas was kind of volunteering, not really volunteering when we started or whatever, but I was basically saying, hey, you want to come out? I'll buy you food and a plane ticket. You can come see another city. 
hang out for a while and make me a video in exchange. And the first few videos we made were that way. It wasn't like a pay situation. I don't mind paying for talent. That's you got to, right? You right. have to. But um, but you want to find the people that are it like Aiden was like, Oh, can I please have this job? I'll work there for free if I have to. You know what I mean? And it's like, if you're doing the work, I'll pay you. You know what I mean? But that's the attitude that I want to see. Right. So yeah, that's how this kid Noah is. I mean, he he's literally asked me so many times, like, you ever want me to come over clean snakes? Like just like i was like that's thanks like i just haven't taken advantage of it because i like i don't want you just have to come over just to clean my snakes like that seems ridiculous i can clean my snakes <laughs> you know i say let them you know because what, what you don't realize is like they're doing it because they love your snakes and they don't get you know like when people came over for that retic fest thing we did ashley's like oh we didn't schedule enough events for them and i was like babe look around everyone's like, Duran was literally like, Oh, I'm smiling so much. My cheeks hurt, you know, <laughs> because he's holding a wild caught Carampa or, you know what I mean? Something that's just like, nobody gets to do that. And if you think back, like, you know, the, the would you have held and cleaned the blue beauty snake that we saw at CMB reptiles for free? You were in love with that snake. You know what I mean? You would have done anything just to be able to spend the time with the animal, right? So let them do it. Somebody sent me a blue beauty snake. <laughs> I saw that. It was pretty cool. <laughs> it's super yeah. cool, dude. Well, somebody, uh, cure, cure constrictors. Jeremy it was over super constrictors. blue, too. Like, yeah. Most of them are not that blue. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, he's, he's a look. He's huge, too, and looks like just absolutely mint, like perfect health it's pretty cool is it captive bread or wild caught do you know um yeah adam wolf uh produced him oh okay cool that's yeah right on now that's that's good stuff you don't get better riley's sneaking over here hiding <laughs> i'm pretty sure she wants to be on camera come here riley say hi you won't be able to hear anything so riley just finished her first play we decided these guys need some extracurricular activities <laughs> and so <laughs> we uh she was in a play it was Beauty and the Beast. Do you care to guess which part she got? She, this is our ham. She's our little. I, I'm guessing um, she got Beast. <laughs> he guessed it. He said you got Beast. She actually got two parts. Well, it's kind of three, but she got the Beast and then uh, the Gaston part. Where okay. like, I'm so beautiful. All the women are in love with me because it was okay. all girls in this cast. So, and I thought she would be fun as Beast, but she was really good as Gaston. Nice. So it was pretty cool. So anyway. It was a musical and everything. It was crazy. My teacher said, uh, when we do the bite, the beats, oh. My teacher said <laughs> when we were doing the play that I was better as Gideon than I was as Beast. Yeah, your dad said that too, but you didn't hear it, but that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good you want to hear it one out, out the other. Congratulations. <laughs> I saw another Riley. So my buddy Travis, um, a living legless, moved to Tennessee a couple weeks ago. Um, but I was at the dentist yesterday. And the lady, the receptionist there, Candy, which this Check dentist. in that file cabinet. Sorry. This dentist, like everybody there is so broad. Like I look forward to going to this dentist because I get to sit there and the lady that cleans my teeth is like so cool to talk to. And like her, she always talks about snakes. Everybody in the dentist office knows that, you know, there's reptiles involved. They always ask me like, what's happening? Uh -huh. with the They're really not so rad. <laughs> no, you should like, check that out. <laughs> yeah. No, she's really good about like taking her hands out of my mouth after she asks me a question so that I can answer. <laughs> oh, okay. And she like take breaks. Like she, and her husband likes really loves snakes. She's like, yeah, my husband, every time I'm driving, like nine times out of 10, he's like, right, pulls over the side of the road, wants to check out this snake. It's super awesome. But the receptionist, Candy was like, I was like, oh, my son went to this uh, reptile show out, out here recently. I, she's like, she didn't know where it was because he went with his dad. And uh, she's like, what do you think? I was like, it's probably the one at Madonna, the ZooMed put on. And he's like, she's like, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was in Paso maybe or whatever. But she's showing me this video on the phone. I'm like, yeah, it looks like Madonna. And then her son is being handed this snake by Travis's daughter, Riley, in the video that she's showing me. So I'm like, I don't know, I just made that connection when I saw Riley there. I was like, yeah, this ran, she's this, you know, she's thinking this random person is handing her a snake and she's showing me the video. I'm like, hey, yeah, that, that's my, that's my buddy's daughter. That's my buddy handing, handing your son a snake. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's such a, it's such a small world. I'll tell you, I did a, a thing. I managed to squeeze away. So we're talking how busy I am and how I, a lot of times don't get to do, it's not about 
doing things you don't want to do, like the money situation. It's about not getting to do all the stuff you do want to do. Ah, see, that's so, where I would struggle. Uh, there's so much I don't get to do because I have to, because I'm obligated to an employee, a customer, a snake. Um, you know, it's just rough. But like, I don't know if you've noticed in the videos lately, my hair is getting longer and longer. I need a haircut. I was like, I got to get a haircut before Tinley and I didn't have the time to do it. And I got this haircut like yesterday. <laughs> um, and I hadn't got it cut since Tinley. That's how bad. So it's been like three, four months overgrown. You know what I mean? On just Tinley, getting a haircut. Tinley was last month, bro, by the way. I know. <laughs> no, I'm saying I was already like two months, three months into needing a haircut. I was like, I got to get a haircut before I go to Tinley. And I didn't. Oh, I, gotcha. So then I went a month past that. That's my point. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So it does seem like another <laughs> lifetime ago, but, but, um, but anyway, the one thing that I got to do that I really wanted to do lately was a cousin of mine is working at like an inner city charter school, right? So not everybody at a charter school is like this, but like there's a lot of great kids and stuff at charter school, but a lot of kids are the ones that like didn't work out at the public school. You know, so now they got to go to the charter school just to finish their education because they're having issues. So really poor area, you know, just kind of sheltered kids. You know, they just seem one side of life and that's it. And um, he was doing kind of like a it was almost like a job fair, except that it was for kids that were like kindergarten all the way through eighth grade. So it's just kind of see what's out there in the STEM field. So science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And so I was one of the people that he invited and he's like, yeah, yeah. We just want to like get people excited about science stuff. You with the snakes, of course, that's going to be a hit, you know, like any kind of live animal. Right. And that's going to be great. And I was like, you realize like, I only have a high school education if you're trying to keep kids in school or whatever. And I ditched for most of high school, you know, I learned what I needed and then all the stuff I know about whatever is a side learning. <laughs> I did not care what they had to say at school, but I might be the bad example for that. Um, but, uh, but no, it was a hit. It was cool. It was one of those things. Like it's always fun when a kid's holding a snake and they're like, this is the first time I ever touched a snake. And you're like, yeah, right on dude. That's cool. You know, good job. This was like half the kids that were there said it's the first time they'd seen a snake in person. I'm like, blown away like what and they're like no i see like dogs cats and squirrels you know what i mean like I, right i saw a deer once at one time i saw a turkey a raccoon you know we're out here in pennsylvania that's the stuff you see all the time so i was just i was so cool i had this seven and a half foot cow retic i'm putting in people's hands and they're playing with it and like oh feel the tongue it's not doesn't sting or anything you know like it was just so cool to hang with the kids. And I told him like, look, cause it was a job fair thing. So the kids kind of like just floated around and really they were all just there wanting to touch a snake. And so I didn't get to like present any information, but I told him, I was like, I'll come back for free. You know what I mean? And we can talk genetics, you know, we can talk whatever you want. Like we can really dive in. So if you have like, um, I know for the eighth graders, they were getting up to the biology thing, which is perfect for the snake breeding morph stuff, by the way. But like the green peas, the yellow peas, the wrinkled peas are smooth. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. It's an introduction to Mendelian genetics. And I was like, just cross off everywhere it says peas and fill out like albino and golden child. And then I'll bring some stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, so it was so fun. I, I just haven't, done anything like that in a while. I know you're into the educational stuff. I've done a bunch of them myself, um, but rarely do I get to give good information. It's usually like birthday parties or you're the entertainment, you know, not the education. Right. And when you are the education, for me, it's always been like a college university where they're like boring people to give the information to, <laughs> you know what I mean? So giving like you know, cool experiences and information to young kids and getting them excited about that. Oh man, was that fun? Yeah. I think this age group will be fun tonight. It, it's a, uh, I think they're like 11 to 14 years old. That's perfect. A lot, yeah. A lot of the ones I've done have been, you know, elementary schools or yeah, like, yeah. Birthday parties for a younger mm -hmm. age group, this 11 to 14, this should be pretty, uh, 
This should be people cool. don't realize this. If you guys are listening and you think about like kids' birthday parties or whatever, like they will have fun if they're six and they get the holy reptile, but then they're done. They're like, I saw it. Let's go do something else. Balloon, you know? <laughs> yeah. It, and if you if you get like high schoolers into it, like I remember I did a birthday party. Um, this is a while back. This is in Thousand Oaks. And I did a birthday party for a 17 year old. He was turning 17 and he was just into reptiles. And I was talking to mom and they had like a pool in the backyard. So we brought like a monitor, <laughs> the water monitor swimming in his pool with him and his friends. And like, and he was just eating it up because you're now like, if you're passionate about that, you have enough attention span and level of consciousness to really soak up some good information. So that's the age group, like high school. That's, that's like my jam. That's what, who I like talking to. They're young enough to still be excited and exciting, um, but old enough to get what you're saying. And you can drop some pretty heavy stuff on them. It's great. No doubt. Yeah. I'm looking forward to tonight. This will be an older group than I've ever worked with before, you know? So yeah, definitely looking forward to it. <sighs> we had, I've, you know, you want to know what my favorite one was whenever I go into these things, I yes. like to give like a message, right? Like a, have a main point, you know, not just say, here's the animal and here's the info card facts. Yeah. I think you've told me this one. I, if I'm correct about what you're about so to the say. Tanuki, have I done this on the podcast? It was a Tanuki based one. Maybe. Cause I think, to, well, when you say Tanuki, I immediately think of Mario brothers three. Yeah. Right. That's a impressive. Cause everyone calls out the raccoon suit. It's impressive that you know that it's a Tanuki. Um, but yeah. So uh, I, my point, my message to these young people, we had, these were uh, seniors in high school. And so I said, okay, what's the, what's the message I want to bring? Yeah, I'll bring some animals and I'll share some stuff. That's what I got paid to do. But really I want to land something on these kids, you know, and I'm going to drop some information here. So I thought it would be really cool if they understood that they need to take um, control of their own destinies and not be, you know, kids are very uh, manipulative, you know, easily manipulated. And then you go into college and you end up making compromises that you shouldn't have made because you're manipulated by whatever's going on. And I was like, you need to stand firm. You know, it's time to grow up, take responsibility for your actions, understand that stuff, make your own decisions. Right. That was kind of the main point I wanted to bring. So I, sh I showed them all these cool animals and stuff. How old was this group? Seniors in high school. Okay, perfect. And so I showed them all these cool animals. Here's this, here's that, whatever. And I said, I saved you something special for the end. My sister had this dog that was super weird looking. I don't know what breed it was. The mom was a poodle. It got knocked up by something. We always joked around that it got knocked up by a raccoon because it was just this strange dog that would stand up on hind legs and make noises like, rah, 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 rah. and it would sound like it was talking and it didn't have dog features. It climbed trees. It would sit on your shoulder. It was a super weird dog and it was white and it was kind of like wiry fur and stuff. And the fur, we always joked around that like, you know, when you buy those hoodies or something, you have the fur lining. Yeah. And there was this, this big thing back around the time when I was giving this presentation this this big like oh my gosh all the the vegans were were terror terrorized by the fact that the faux fur was actually a tanuki fur it was this japanese or chinese raccoon dog you know it's this it's a creature called a tanuki and they're killing them and using the pelts and calling it fake fur but it's not fake it's real fur from this animal you've never heard of right so this was this big giant scam major labels and stuff like that we're getting in trouble because supposed to be fake fur and it was real so we took this wiry haired white little dog that she had that didn't look like a dog anyway and i put ma makeup around its eyes to give it like a mask and, and banded the tail and we did all these things and i brought all these other exotic animals and then i said and this is a tanuki and then i it, it was this much truth you know a little ounce of truth and the rest of it was just complete bs and lies that i told this group i had so much fun lying to all of these young adults and um, basically, I, I told them the terrible plight that's happening with tanukis and fake fur. And I saw a girl in the crowd that had like the liner. And I was like, come up here. And I was like, pet that liner. Now pet this little puppy. You know what I mean? She's like, oh, my God, it's the same. You know what I mean? Like, oh, wear 
wearing dog skin coats, you know, and she's freaking out and everyone's like, that's terrible. And I, 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 I uh, got an emotional reaction out of them. So they were no longer thinking logically. And then I passed around a paper and I said, sign this petition. You got to put your information on there or whatever. And, and we can save the Tanuki. And the paper that I had printed out was an army recruiting thing. <laughs> and so I had, I passed it around. I had all these kids. I got like 75 signatures of kids that had pledged their lives to the army because I gave them an emotional response about Tanuki. I gave them a piece of paper. They didn't read, they wrote it and they signed up for the army. And then I told them, no, it's all a lie. This is just a weird dog. I mean, the Tanuki thing is real, but this was BS. And I used this much lot, you know, this much to convince you guys to sign your lives away. And I said, you're going to, uh, into a period of your life where you can quite literally sign your lives away to a number of different directions in life. Make sure it's the direction that you really want to go. Don't get caught up in the moment or be emotional or think for today and sign away your tomorrow. You know what I mean? Make sure that you're making intentional decisions with your lives. And that, and that was my little truth bomb, you know, yeah, even if that's, and it was so fun. Yeah. Sounds like it. <laughs> even if it's just lying stuck, to all those kids. Yeah. Even if it's stuck with just one kid, uh, that would be something, you know, cause that's, that's to get your rational brain to conquer your emotional brain. That's a very, very tall order. It, especially at that age or at any age for that matter. Not only when you're, like you said, it, it, such an easily manipulated age when your prefrontal cortex is not done uh, forming and you got all these things that are, you're still growing into even adults that have formed all of that brain uh, to get the rational brain to take control over the emotional elephant that more often rampages and says who irrational brain who i'm here i'm in control right. i'm in charge i'm the elephant right. um yeah that's uh and tall, how many of us tall. have regrets from our youth you know what i mean like so many of us so yeah but i i try to do that like i i try to just kind of think okay these are the kids i'm talking to what does somebody in that time period of their life really need to hear because I'm going to hold a reptile in front of everyone. And so they're going to pay attention to what I say, because I have the most interesting spot in the room, right? I'm the guy on the stage with a reptile. So let me say something that actually matters. I could teach them about the reptile, and I usually do, but I try to have a point to it, you know? You're making so. me think if I should give these kids the uh, reproduction speech. They're, they're learning about it. <laughs> <laughs> How old are they again? <laughs> 11 to 14, ready to reproduce. That's a pretty good age, honestly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's probably, yeah, that's probably what I'll end give up Give the doing. old birds and the bees. Yeah. You're going to be sexing some snakes up on stage? Yeah, I am, <laughs> actually. <laughs> are you really? Yeah. Oh, man, I've never done that. That's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna be popping be, out some peens for everybody to peep at. <laughs> you gotta teach someone to do it. You gotta, or like bring them up so that when you pop some peens, they're like, now pet it. Tell the crowd what it feels like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> pet, pet the hammer beans. What is it like? <laughs> That's the stuff that makes them, when you ask them, like you, you use a Ashley's in the background going, no, no, <laughs> abort, abort. <laughs> But hey, I'll tell you what, trying, if you make someone touch to... a snake penis, they will remember it for the rest of their life. Yeah. And by the way, abort is what we're trying to uh, write. We're trying to maybe stop that from having to do abort. an abortion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, learn a little bit about how it works. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, maybe a good point to make is like, I've got a male right now. That there's females popping off in that room. Oh, right there. dude, I've got a male right now, too. I meant to tell you about this. He's uh is my my golden child, uh my gold my motley golden junior. child junior. Um he this morning is throwing up crazy arches at me. I was like, Oh cool. <laughs> I was like, do I throw him in with him? I'm not planning to breed retics at this point, but I was sure. when I saw him doing that, I was like, maybe I should toss him up there. <laughs> See yeah. what happens. I, I've always thought it would be really cool because I, I don't want to deny the snakes the experience. I would love and you know, maybe we should get a little controversial here for a second, but all I was going to say is like the point to make to the kids, I've got rooms, the room is full of ovulating females. So the males are all going nuts. They're destroying their faces. They won't eat. You know what I mean? Because they're just hyper into this sex drive. And it's like, 
it's fine to, to, you know, kind of go through those normal changes in your body and, and get to know yourself in a new way. And there's new things going on, but maybe don't do something like destroy your face to where you have scars for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Like maybe that's the analogy, but um, here's the controversial, like dovetailing into the junior thing. I have always hated, like, it just, it's so cringy to me and it's going to make me cringe right now. Um, people who breed cool stuff and put eggs in freezers, like tuataras. New Zealand's producing too many tuataras. They don't have homes for them all, so they're freezing them all. And it's not because they're trying to find pet keepers who want a tuatara because I want a tuatara. <laughs> you know what I mean? Give me those eggs. You're going to throw them away anyway. Ah, you know, or uh, LA Zoo or whatever produces producing too many Komodo dragons. It's like, I want a Komodo dragon so bad, you know? Um, and I've always hated that. But uh, I, I wonder if for the care of the animal that you're working with, right? Like you love your retics. Retics, like their food drive and their reproductive drive are the two strongest things that they experience in life. I love it. I'm, I'm breeding the snakes that people do want to buy in the market, but I love giving them that opportunity. Rob was texting me a picture. There, we'll put it up here real quick. Um, Rob was texting me a picture earlier because we threw a whole bunch of males in with females. And this is a Ooh, let's see right there this is a first uh you can barely see it but the male is down here on the bottom let me see if i brighten your screen bit. up here yeah why is that so dim all right okay there you go so you can see the male twisted up with his tail up under that female first time male first time female so <laughs> that's photographic evidence of a very thrilling and exciting new life experience for both of those animals, like snake porn over here. You know what I mean? Um, but I love that they get to have that. I love that the males, like we're going to take him out after he's done breeding with her and we're going to let him relax and get some food and recuperate. Cause he's been working hard when they throw those arches. It's that's more aerobic activity than he's had his entire life. Especially if like in this case, that male probably weighs, three pounds. And I think the female weighs 40. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so he's working hard <laughs> to get that job done. But um, I love that he gets to have that experience. I love that the females, like when I did maternal incubation last year, that was like, oh, so cool to watch that female, whether she's excited, worried, whatever it is, she goes through this whole range of, of emotions and experiences that none of my retics have ever had because that was the first time I ever did maternal incubation. So I think it'd be really cool to be able to give them, at least even if you didn't maternally incubate or something. But if it's in the case of like a mainland retic cross where there's so many people that just breed because they have a male and a female, so they just breed them. Um, and they're kind of like unwanted animals. Like you had that puppy right there. I've been looking at adopting puppies and stuff. I'd love to get a rescue. And you go to the rescues, it's like 90% pit bull mixes you know, and I love pit bulls. I think they're great dogs, but whoever's crossing all these things needs to stop They're, You know what I mean? Even if you give them a good first home, so many of them, the owners are like, oops, I wasn't capable of this. And then they become rescues. So sure you made your money, but back to the question again, about what would you not do for money? I don't like doing that anymore. You know, I, I like them to go. So anyways, my question would, would be, I wonder, like, wh what do you feel about in the interest of giving your animals the highest level husbandry and life experience possible for your animals, junior and what, which female would you breed them to? Halo. So junior and halo, just to give them that experience and allow them to kind of have that full life cycle experience. But now, and I'm not saying that their babies would be unwanted. I'm just kind of going down the mainland retic thing you know so many people getting out of them right now um what about putting eggs in the freezer and i'm sure there are listeners thinking the way i do with two atars where I'm like no i want one of those retics or whatever but if it's better for the animals that they not that the babies that they never existed in the first place you know 
for me, it's different with humans. You know what I mean? It's it's a little bit different. That's oh, a tough. Speaking, speaking of abort, you mean? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a t- it's a tough it's a tough topic, and it's tough for me even with animals. Yeah. Oh. Well, uh, it's. I mean, indigo food is one thought. I mean, besides just put them in the freezer and throw them away. That's, that's what a lot of mainland retic breeders do. They, yeah. I mean, they're I mean, saying, well, then, okay, it's not wasteful if I feed it to a cobra or a monitor lizard or yeah, whatever. Yeah, then you're also allowing that thing that usually has snakes on its menu to live their best life and, and get a taste of what they would be eating out there in, in the wild. And It's probably the most Native American way to do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I always <laughs> you know thought I mean? about that. Waste like, not. Yeah, not. something that I find, find so many people like, you know, lose their minds if you feed a snake to a snake because they really like snakes. But what writing off the entire time, like all these rodents that we feed to snakes. It's so silly. So <laughs> it's silly. like, what are you talking about? Yeah. You, you find like this, this highly intelligent uh, mammal that we use as food is acceptable and just fine. But you feed a snake to a snake and it's like, you've just committed the ultimate sin. Even uh, with human diets, like we Americans eat four species. Oh, no, animals. not even to mention, yeah, everybody's probably And it's like, McDonald's whoa, whoa, you're, you're saying, how could you Bambi or whatever if I go archery hunt a, a doe? You know what I mean? I take her out of the wild and eat my food. And you're like, no, no, you have to eat cows. You're like, wait, that's better? What people do to cows is better? They're both grazing uh, hooved animals. Well, and one of them lived a completely natural life and participated in the ecosystem. Right. And I took personal responsibility for its moment of death as an animal lover. <laughs> you know what I mean? Versus who knows where your cow. Yeah, like, that's definitely a subject we could go on for forever. Oh, just, no, or, I'm or just saying just... it's so crazy. The the disconnects we have in our brain. Oh, I know. It's also when you could just end right there. It's that, it's that simple process of saying, well, you're, you're not okay with feeding this animal to this animal because... And then what, what do you actually do in your life? Like, do you have you, do you eat cheeseburgers? Do you eat fish? Do you eat chicken? I mean, yeah. where, where do we, where do we draw this line and why, and what is the justifiable reason behind drawing that line that you can actually hold up in a, a court of rationality? Well, here's my, this is the crazy, I told you I have my own like moral thing that doesn't make any sense. Here's my rationality on the breed, the snakes and say, use the babies for, tegu food or whatever um there's something to me that seems terribly unbalanced and and it's almost just this is my feelings right it feels like a gross um exploitation of animals to usually when this happens it's it's a morph combo right so you get that one in 64 odds or whatever and you do the breeding and you get that snake you want but you have created 63 snakes that are unwanted. And so breeders who are like, Ooh, I'm going to cherry pick this one. Cause that's the one I wanted to do. And I'm going to kill the rest of them. Call, call the rest of them, right. Feed them to a monitor. Even if it's a good way to go, it seems so like just gross to me to do that breeding, to get that one animal and then basically discard the other ones. On the other hand, if you said, I did the breeding to give my animals supreme husbandry, you know what I mean? Like, hey, here's your whole life cycle, guys that would never normally breed. And then I either fed the eggs or the embryos or the babies or whatever to another animal so that I'm completely using everything. It was not done for any monetary gain. You're doing the same action, but one seems okay with me and the other one doesn't. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and it's strictly because of the, you're doing it for money or doing it for like what the motivation is behind it. Yeah, I guess so. So I guess it's not actually the act of feeding a baby animal. It's the reason to a monitor. Doing. Yeah, it's not the act that's gross. It's your intentions. It's you as a person that's kind of gross in that scenario, right? Like, yep. does that make sense? I mean, is that resonant? Does that? No, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's just weird. It's just funny to me. Same act. One seems okay. One doesn't. And just like if I mentioned hunting a, a, a deer, there are some people who are like, well, I eat meat too, but that one seems wrong. Cows seem okay. Well, you can take me, that. I'm like, deer seem okay. <laughs> it's just that, weird. <laughs> you can take that intention thing and add it to almost any situation. Like, 
why is somebody doing something like what is their reason behind it and it could become you can literally go from noble to deplorable and disgusting with the same action just depending on what the intent was behind it that's kind of my thing with the money thing though it was like my moral code is like you know a lot of people are like this act is wrong always wrong you know like you shouldn't steal right but i'm not i'm not going to really get down on the poor kid that steals a loaf of bread so he can live another day do you know what i mean so like the act does that make sense like so for me the moral thing a lot of people are like well you should do this or you should do that or you should do that especially in the kind of like conservative christian context right that i was sort of grown up in this is good this is bad this is good this is bad and my whole thing was like i don't see that in in fact i actually find like when i'm doing my own studies to try to enrich myself i find scriptures the things that's like god doesn't use the same thing to measure people that they use to measure each other you know what i mean he doesn't he doesn't look at what we look at how rich is that guy well how big is his snake facility you know what i mean he says he looks at the heart and the motives and so i think if we're going to be godlike in that way that makes a lot of sense to not judge somebody on outward appearances any specific act maybe a past thing that they did or did not do or consequences that they're living with or whatever not judge on that judge on their heart you know what i mean what's the motivation and it, this is funny because you can agree or not agree or be Christian or not Christian or whatever. And that's fine. But I think that people tend to judge others based on their actions, right? Or what things they did. And then we judge ourselves based on our intentions. Mm. So we're more lenient on ourselves because like, well, I screwed up, but I meant to do good. So it's forgivable. But then you see someone else do something. And you're like, oh, you cold hearted bastard, <laughs> you know, based on their actions. Cause you can't see their intentions. Yeah. I've, I've made it a big part to find out what intentions are with people. If, if I'm going to judge, I, I've always been trying to make be a better person. You know, I fail on a daily basis, but that's one of them is that's why I do a lot of self judging or self uh, reflection or self, uh, you know, just see, ch checking my own characters. How am I interacting with the people of the world around me? That's like where I check it. Like, something as simple as something I've been working on recently, which is not getting pissed off at somebody that might be in front of me in the fast lane. That's a hard one for me. It's, <laughs> it's, it's probably the hardest one for me, especially yeah. since it's not that big a deal to be mad at that person. But is it like, like how much is it? Because it, it's, you know, at least the way that I would handle it, the person in front of me probably has no idea what the, the traumatic experience I'm having behind them. And right, it's yeah. like, you know, completely, completely like, it's, I'm not affecting them whatsoever. And unless they happen to look up, even if they right. do look up, I, I, I'm like expressionless. I'm just like, you know, just if they can tell mm. by the firm, the firm line in my face, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but that's it. Um, but even on that small of a level, I don't know, there's, I don't, know. I don't want to say that I'm about to go into toot my own horn zone, which I don't, I don't want to do. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, to your point, like figuring out if you can figure out what somebody's intentions are instead of judging them on their actions, then, but, and that's a tough, it's all order. That's a tall order. It's like, you, take you have to have a brain. conversation before you're able to judge. Them. Right. You have to have a conversation with them. And then even then they could be really good liars. Sure. But Hopefully. Or you could be completely under misunderstanding what they're trying to say on the that, other hand. That's it. Oh man. See, it's, you could take it. So you're better so off far. just not to judge people. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, <laughs> it's above my pay grade. Ah, thanks for making it simple. <laughs> thanks for making it more simple for you. There it is. There it yeah. is. Just don't yeah. just love on them. Try to help them out. It's, you know, if you can, if you, if you learn something that you can help them out, like the stupid kids across the street from you, they can say, Hey, I was stupid once too. Let me help you out. Cause you seem like you're about to be stupid. <laughs> don't don't worry i was there i'm not judging you but let me show you what i learned and you can decide whether it's worth it for you to go through it the hard way or not excellent yeah excellent hey so what what's um just more reptile related now that we've solved all the problems of the world <laughs> uh you got a blue beauty snake and i know that that was a surprise not a plan but we had talked about it several weeks prior when we were in phoenix and all that kind of stuff um 
what is going on with your reptile collection? You're not, I mean, I know you breed ball pythons. I've seen you bred blood pythons. You're not <laughs> breeding retics intentionally. Um, but now you're getting blue beauties. You did the educational stuff. So you had like kind of one of everything for that. What, what's next? Where, where are you going with that? <sighs> you're, I, I wish I had a clear answer for myself. I'm glad you <laughs> asked it. I'm glad you asked it. I'd, I'd love to have that answer for myself. Um, I've been fairly all over the board. I'd love to have like this little personal zoo. Does that make sense? It certainly doesn't make sense business-wise, which is why I'm on the fence of like, is Triple B going to be- But it doesn't have to be business. business. Like the, the retics are kind of a therapy animal, right? Yeah. The ball pythons are kind of a business animal. Yeah. For you. Yes, for so, me. Where the hell is all that? Um, they're also <laughs> therapy. The they're also therapy. I don't know. I've always liked. Okay. I've always liked reptiles, but I, there's there's this part of me, you know. I've been I'm trying to be honest with myself and like, like, do I want to? And this is maybe where actually taking an employee on makes sense. Or do, like, do I want to be cleaning up snake crap every single day? Like, do I want to do that? Is am I am I enjoying it? And sometimes I I come down. Actually, I was down here this morning doing it, and I was like, I was actually enjoying it. So, <laughs> I. I find my, the other thing is like the, the public aspect too, right? Like I've been in this zone where for so long I've been sharing my heart publicly and often, you know, I, I did, I feel like there are blocks where I did it more often than not, like where I was doing it like almost daily or, you know, semi-weekly um, to at least a week, once every week um, to more recently, I've been wanting to be more local and not so much online with my time and my, my energy and my heart and my love, I've been wanting to spread it in places that I can feel it back. And this is probably as much as I like to think it's good for other people, which it, I'm sure it is. Uh, it's also for myself being selfish to myself, being able to see the reactions instead of just like, cause I do know from people telling me that they do have these reactions to the videos, you know, they get these, they, they can feel what I'm saying or they can, they can relate and they can actually, that can actually touch their heart but not getting to see it. I lose connection with that. I've been finding myself drawn more to fo again, focusing more of my energies here locally, especially all the people I've finally been meeting that I've been wanting to for a while. Like I've, I've been talking about for years. I feel so like you I want get that feedback. Yeah. I want, and, and also be able to have like this effect on my area locally, like where I, where I live that's directly surrounding me and, and be part, more part of the community that I live in physically than just the community that I'm part of thanks to the power of the internet. And yeah. uh, so that all ties in with reptiles because a big part of the reason that I'm involved in the community online does have a lot to do with reptiles and reptiles are at the core of that. And what am I doing? Where am I going with this? I ask myself that. I asked myself that today. <laughs> okay, and, interesting. And I don't have a solid I think answer. it's funny that we don't talk for a long time because we're both so busy and then we have the same questions for each other <laughs> but it's okay good i asked myself that today well i'm asking you tonight <laughs> what'd you figure out i literally asked that was another thing like i said the bathroom whatever question i had for you i i thought that same thing too as i moved from the bathroom to the laundry basket to you know oh no i haven't showered i needed to shower i meant to shower um that's where the best stuff comes <laughs> yeah i guess i should, hopefully i'll have time to shower between now and uh and later um, it's always next month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, n no, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Garrett. I don't know exactly <laughs> what's going. Well, a couple things happened. Like I did want to breed different species, you know, and I had these scrub pythons that were about ready. Come to find out, one of them is a boy, or the, it, and they were well, they're you both got rid boys. of one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do have a, a new female now, but she is going to take. You know, she's wherever she's at it's going to be a few years again to wait yeah. for that to happen i had my uh indigo snakes that would probably be about ready this coming season if not next season and which is last one last one um now i've got this uh blue beauty male that was sent to me which is gotta get a female gorgeous and can't have a pet <laughs> gotta breed it i don't have Welcome to. to the 21st century yes no, you but do I, but you know i read I it online uh, yeah, right, right, <laughs> <laughs> right. No, yeah, obviously I've got these uh, retakes. The third are... part of every care sheet, breeding. <laughs> well, if I want to give them their full 
experience in life, then I owe it to them. Right? <laughs> Top level husband. As well as having their offspring fed off to animals that eat those offspring. Uh, just That's the their full cycle. experience. Ooh, yeah, snake yeah. eater, eating snakes. Yeah, yeah. there you go. So right, right now, I... Yeah, like I said, I, I don't know 100%. I do know where at least my direction that I've been headed with ball python breeding has been steady and constant since I started doing it and nothing sure. has broken there. So Yeah, that's the only thing you have any direction in. That's the only thing I have any direction in. Is I know where I've wanted to go with my ball python breeding since I started doing it and I'm still headed exactly in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, everything and the, the ultimate like, with that Ooh. one is... Uh, sunset clown pies right yep. that's your mm -hmm. big deal yeah that'll be cool and they've even slowed myself down by you know selling animals that would have gotten me there faster uh well that's you know. kind of what i was talking about like stuff that hurts you or whatever mm -hmm. so like somebody we had a high roller talking about stuff today and rob's like hey tell them about that anary carampa you know kind of like the money is no thing and i was like i don't know i can't do the anary i can't sell that anary carampa you know, it's a, it's, it's my only shot. I, you know, they're so rare. It's the rare of the rare, you know, and kind of like coolest snake I have ever made or it will ever make. Um, as far as I'm concerned and I've had huge offers for it. Like you have for some of your cool stuff and I'll sell snakes to get ahead. And I thought about selling that guy to help fund the purchase of this facility when I was like, Oh, the bank's not going to go through. But now that I'm sitting here, I'm like, he's not for sale. He, <laughs> <laughs> right. you know what i mean like yeah. i don't have that pressure i don't care he's not totally. for sale next year maybe today no yeah so i'm there with a couple of my snakes too but i've always been like i've been definitely willing to sell holdbacks in the instance that you know uh i don't know i needed to or felt that i needed to it didn't really need to but felt that i should i should do that um but there's definitely been a couple where like people people are like well i really want that one i'm like no this one is that's where i know where my real holdbacks are where i'm like you don't have enough money. <laughs> I promise. Like I, I, I don't know that I have any animals like that where I won't sell it, but I mean, you're talking big, big money. Like, uh, I mean, I'll just like the Anary Carampa was a $75,000 snake, mm -hmm. you know, and I was considering selling it to help fund and I had potential buyers and stuff like that. And now that I got it and I don't need it, I wouldn't sell them for that. So that's kind of like where we're at. However, would I ever sell them? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just gotta be a lot more than seventy-five thousand dollars. Cause that's just doesn't do it for me. That doesn't that's like what is that? This doesn't get me through next month's bills. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So no, I ain't doing that for adulting. I like that guy. <laughs> you know, you have to get me ahead. You have to, you know, because that guy will get me ahead. Right. So the way I see that is like. It's almost like selling a business. What, how do you evaluate a business? Well, you know, what kind of profit is that going to generate for, say, three years? And if you're going to cut me out of that stream, you know, of all the cool stuff I can do with that Henry Carampa, better be a pretty significant amount of money. Right. But there is an amount for sure. Huh. So, well, I'm glad you brought it back to the, the deep end so we could swim back, well, you know, slightly shallow in the deep end money mm, swim out yeah because i gotta i gotta swim out i think i need to start preparing for the next well man have fun with that sex talk while you're swimming out <laughs> just remember you were one in a trillion buddy <laughs> i don't think there's really a trillion of those things but i mean so, so like really, really whatever really virulent like <laughs> virulent <laughs> virulent viral uh well dude let's uh can we do the next one in person? Is that possible? Like, or... yeah, it is. Come on down. All right. You're you're overdue on the Pittsburgh thing. I know you wanted to come out for this one. I did. So, but it was like, and I would have had you too. You know what I mean? It's just sometimes it, you know you can see that you're like you're asking how beat up I am. Like, look at my scars from moving. I've got all these like I don't know if you can see it. Oh, there it is. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah just jabs and things and oh we just been pushing yeah so i'm glad i like, come glad. out when come out when i can hang out with you don't yeah, come out when you're watching sounds, me do a bunch of stuff that sounds about right well we'll, we'll see what ha what happens with next month and um yeah maybe we can make it work that would be cool yeah next month sounds fun all right all right broski all right man well 
shoot. I'll, we'll be in touch. You let me know. Yeah. And if not, I'll watch your vlog and you can watch mine. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that works. <laughs> All right, buddy. I Give hugs you, and kisses to the family for me. I Next will. time you see Matt, tell him he needs a dog or something. I can't text him back that He fast. has a dog. Tell him to let his dog lick his face. I, <laughs> my tongue is dry. <laughs> I will. I'm going to see him on Monday, so I'll, I'll let him know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. All right, bro. Take care. Later, man. Bye.